All right, uh, continue from last time. Uh, we studied two important types of. I was excited, man, not a I'm sorry? I was excited. I looked at my grade. Oh. Okay. <laughs> sorry. We, we studied two important types of lipids from last time. Okay, those two important types are triglycerides and uh, phosphoglycerides. Okay, they're both glycerides, meaning their alcohols are the same, called glycerol. Okay, glycerol. Now, these two types of lipids belong to two different subtypes. Triglyceride, we call it a simple lipid because it contains only what? The alcohol and the fatty acids. But phosphoglycerides, are a type of complex lipid because besides the alcohol, the glycerol, and fatty acid, it has what? Other components, which is phosphate esters. Okay, phosphate, that's the main, the, the, what's in common and what are difference between phosphoglycerides and triglycerides. And then continue what we have studied about phosphoglycerides, the difference is the phosphate. Okay, we know phosphate is making a phosphor Phos uh, the phosphate ester bond with the glycerol itself, and also there is a diester on the phosphate as well with a small alcohol molecules. Okay, the small alcohol are one of those three types. And what's in common about these three types of small alcohols on phosphoglycerides are they're both kind of ethanol amine type of an alcohol. What it means is you can see that the alcohol, the oxygen is making a bond with the phosphate. And besides that, there are two carbons and a nitrogen. Two carbons and a nitrogen. Two carbons and nitrogen. Of course, there are different types of ethanol amines, but they are structurally, they are related. Okay. One of the type is choline. Okay. You can see that how to, how to recognize choline is this nitrogen is a quaternary ammonium ion with four carbons bonded to it. We have seen the structures in in chapter five. Okay, you guys will see this structure again in your second test. Okay, choline, if the alcohol is a choline molecule, we call the resulting phosphoglycerate, sorry, lecithins or phosphatidylcholines. Okay, again, like we said last time, Lesser things are mainly found in abyolk and soybeans. Especially soybeans is a main source of extracting lesser things, okay, which can be used as a emulsifying and cooking spray for, for non-sticking purpose for your cooking pan. Now, if the alcohol is either one of these two, either ethanol amine, again, this is amine. The reason it's charged is under physiological condition, the, the nitrogen is charged. Okay, this is basically ethanol amine. And this is the amino acid serine. If it is one of those two, the phosphoglycerate is called cephalins or phosphatidylethylamine or phosphatidyl series. And cephalins are mainly found in our neural systems. The white matter of the brain, the, 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 the neural tissue, and this spiral, spiral, spinal cord. Okay, these are very abundant lipid in our neural systems. So we're looking at two types of phosphoglycerides. Okay, now today, let's move on to the last type of complex lipid, or you could say the last type of subonic fiber lipids called sphingolipids. Okay, sphingolipids. Now, if you look at the name, you already know for sphingolipids, the alcohol is no longer what? Glycerol. They're not called glycerides. It's called sphingolipids. So what is the alcohol? Okay, what it, the alcohol for sphingolipids has a structure like this. You can see it is a very long chain of alcohol and amine structure. Okay, we call the alcohol sphingosine or sphingoside. It depends on how they pronounce that. Okay, that is the alcohol part for sphingolipids. Okay, alcohol part for sphingolipids. It's a long chain with to hydroxy group and a, an amine group. Now, to
to better help you to understand or compare the structures of the lipids we have studied before and also sphingolipids, we draw the structure of sphingosine like this, kind of like a mimic the structure we draw for glycerate. You see, this is what? This is glycerol, right? Three OHs. So we kind of draw the structure of, these two are the same structure, we just draw it differently. We draw this structure of sphingosine in a way to, to kind of like a, compare the structure of glycerol and the sphingosine. You can see that there's a carbon here with an OH on it. There's a carbon here with the NH2 on it. There's a carbon here with a OH on it. You can see that? Okay, these are the three carbons, kind of like, again, compare with the glycerol structure. But again, this is only how we draw its structure. Okay, this is the structure of sphingosine. Again, these two structures are the same. Okay, this is the long chain here. This is the long chain. Do you guys see that? Okay, again, this is the alcohol for sphingolipid. Now, take a look at the structure of the sphingosine. The difference between the glycerol and the sphingosine, mainly is on what? Be besides the amine group, mainly is on this carbon, right? On glycerol, the carbon only has a what? Has an OH. On the sphingosine structure, this carbon has a what? Has an OH and has a what? Long chain already. So that means or that can help you to, to get you recognize the structure better. That is, on the OH of this carbon, usually you won't see anything attached to it because it has a kind of like a chain already. Okay, you won't see much attached to this OH. Okay, again, let's go back to glycerol. For triglycerides and phosphoglycerides, there's a what on this OH, guys? For, for, for triglycerides and phosphoglycerides, what is attached to this OH? Fatty acid. A fatty acid. Is that right, guys? You remember that? Let's go back to the, the structure. This is triglyceride. This is phosphoglyceride. On that OH, there's a what? A fatty acid. Is that right? Okay, there's a fatty acid chain on the, on the glycerol structure. But for, for sphingolipid, for sphingosine structures, because there's a chain on this kind of along this carbon already you won't see anything attached to the OH okay that's one one thing that's to be noted uh, we're gonna see the structure already and the main difference of different types of sphingolipids is on this OH okay different groups will be on this OH so let's take a look I know it, you're, you're probably confused let's take a look of two different types of or let's take a look at the structure of a sphingolipid one type of it first one type of it. Now, this block diagram shows you the structure of one type of sphingolipid. As you can see here, on this carbon, there's an OH on it. Okay, we just didn't show it, there's a way. There's a what? Long chain. And this chain belongs to this sphingosine. Again, what did this block mean? Sorry. This block means here. You guys see that? This is the chain of the sphingosine itself. Okay, that's why when you draw the sphingosine, you draw it like this because it contains what? A carbon chain. Okay, a carbon chain. On the amine group, there is a fatty acid attached to it because the fatty acid is attached to the, sorry, attached to the amine group, instead of making an ester bond, we're attaching it using what? Using an amide linkage. On the amine group of sphingosine, you have a fatty acid forming an amide linkage with the amine group of sphingosine. Okay, remember this is the amine group. If you want to make a fatty acid attached to it, you have to make a what? An amide bond. Okay, an amide bond. On the OH, in this type of sphingolipid, we have a phosphate group attached to it through phosphate ester linkage. And on the phosphate, there's a diester with choline. Okay, diester with choline. This is one of the sphingolipid structures. Do 
You guys recognize the structure? First is the long chain, which belongs to what? Sphingolipid. You guys see that? Here is the long chain belongs to the sphingolipid, right? Next is the amine group making a amide bond with a what? Fatty acid. This is the fatty acid. You guys see that? And on the OH, there is a phosphate group. And on the phosphate group, there's a small alcohol. In this case, it's a choline. So that's the block diagram. This is one of the structures of sphingolipid. Doesn't we have to remember the, the, the first one, right? Yes, this is the block diagram. You need to know what the components are. First is the sphingosinolipid. And then on the OH, there is a fatty acid through what? Amide linkage. And also on the OH, there is a phosphate. And on the phosphate, there's another alcohol. So this phosphate is very similar to phosphoglycerate, is what? Diester. Okay, phosphodiester. This type of sphingolipid with a phosphate on that OH, on which OH? This OH. You guys see that? This is the OH where, the, where phosphate is attached to. We call that a phospho, I'm sorry, we call this type of sphingolipid sphingomyelin. Okay, sphingo. Have you guys heard of sphingomyelin? You guys learned it like anatomy physiology? Sphingomyelin, all called SPH. Myelin, no? Myelin is the protective layer on the. Yeah. Is what? The protective layer outside the neuron. Protective sheath of what? Of neural tissues, right? The sheath of the neural tissues. And sphingomyelin is actually found in the myelin sheath surrounding neural cells. Okay, you're right. If you guys learned the anatomy of physiology, you know what myelin. Myelin is the sheath of neural cells. And, and sphingomyelin is present in the myelin sheath of the neural cells. Okay, surrounding the neural uh, cells. So which one is sphingomyelin? This is the structure of sphingomyelin. It's a sphingolipid. Okay, it's, again, you only have how many fatty acid residues? One fatty acid. Why only one fatty acid? Because the sphingol, see, this alcohol has a chain already, kind of. That's how nature designed, designed these things. Okay, there is an OH here, but nothing is attached to it. Why? Because there's kind of like a chain already on that carbon. And fatty acid with the amide, and then what? Phosphate. Okay, this is one type of sphingolipid. Okay, one type of sphingolipid. Using this, you understand the structure, the basic structure of sphingolipid, and then let's take a look at the second type. The second type of sphingolipid is very similar to the first type. The only difference is, is on that OH. What's in common, again, is what? There's a chain here, again, belong to the side. There's a fatty acid a link to the nitrogen through what? Amide bond, C-O-N, again, it's the amide bond. That's the same. The difference is where the phosphate was located for sphingomyelin. We have a carbohydrate molecule attached to the OH. Okay, we have a carbohydrate link to the OH. The linkage on the carbohydrate we studied in the chapter 7 is called what linkage? Glycosylic, no, glycosidic linkage. Okay, glycosidic linkage. In this case, guys, take a look. Do you guys see the intermeric carbon of the carbohydrate? Which carbon is the intermeric? This carbon is the intermeric. And this carbon, the CO is pointing up. So this is what type of linkage? Beta, Beta linkage. Okay. You're not linking with another carbohydrate. You don't have to worry about the, like, in the numbers. Only link here is the beta. The other one is sphingosine. You don't have to talk about the numbers. So this is a beta linkage. Okay, beta linkage. Of course, there's only one carbohydrate shown here. There could be multiple carbohydrates. It could be oligosaccharide. It could be three, four, five oligosaccharides attached to it. Attached to it. And this type of sphingolipid we call sphingoglycolipid. 
okay, sphingoglycolipid. Okay, sphingoglycolipid. Glyco means what? Carbohydrate. Okay, carbohydrate. Sphingoglycolipid. What is sphingoglycolipid? Sphingoglycolipid is what? When a carbohydrate bond to the OH through glycosidic linkage. This particular sphingoglycolipid with a single monosaccharide unit, either a glucose or galactose, this is galactose by the way, this particular sphingoglycolipid is called cerebral site. Okay, when you see the prefix cerebral means what? What does the cerebral side mean? Brain. Brain, brain right? Cerebral side. Have you guys watched the X-Men? The cerebral thing, the machine because the cerebral thing. Again, that prefix means brain. Okay, super, super side is what? It's the simplest single glycolipid. And when you see the prefix, you know this type of lipid is mainly present in what? Brain. In brain, in the brain. Okay, you can say the 70% 70, 70, 70% of the dry mass of the brain are what? Are these? Sphingoglycolipids. Good, guys? These are two types of sphingolipids. I listed here. Now we have a better idea of the structures. Okay, you can see that this is sphingosine, the structure. A fatty acid bind to the NH with what? With amide bond. For sphingomyelin, you have a what? A phosphate and choline. For Cerebrocyte or sphingoglycolipid, you have a what? You have a carbohydrate. Again, this is only one. There could be three, four, five multiple carbohydrates bonded to the galactose through glycosidic linkages. Okay, carbohydrates bonds together through glycosidic linkages. Okay, in this case, it's a beta linkage. Okay, the first galactose bind to the OH through beta, beta linkages. I probably won't ask you, but this is how these molecules exist. Does it make sense, guys? Okay, let's cry for the, 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 the name names. Okay, the names. All these are called sphingolipids. When you have a phosphate, these are called sphingophospholipids. When you have a carbohydrate, these are called sphingoglycolipids. All right? Now, when the phosphate is linked to a choline, this particular one is called sphingomyelin. Could be different fatty acid. That's fine. When you have one carbohydrate linked to it, it's called what? A cerebrocyte. Okay, again, you get, uh, sometimes you get confused with the name. Okay, these are all sphingolipids. Two types of sphingolipids, sphingophospholipid, sphingoglycolipid, of course, by their what? By the names, right? And then if you have a choline on the phosphate, sphingomyelin, which is the main component of the mining sheath, in the main mining sheath of the fuel cells. And when you have one carbohydrate, either galactose or glucose, you have a cerebrocyte. Does it all make sense, guys? Any questions? This is not in the notes. This one is not in your notes. Oh, you can, you can take a longer look. Or you can take a picture, or when you watch the video, you can stop there and then. Is that on notes? I just, yeah. Okay. 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 I updated it so that there's no confusions for for this. All right. Here is the summary of all these five types of lipids we have studied so far. Again, like I said, you will not be asked to draw the real structure. You will be asked to draw what? The block structure. Or if you don't, if I don't ask you to draw the Real draw the block structure. You need to draw on the scratch paper to based on the, the block diagram to what uh, to answer the questions, right? You only you have a image of the structures in your mind. You can answer the questions based on the block diagrams. Okay, and if I give you a real structure, you can recognize what that is. Okay, don't worry about the real structure. I would never ask you to draw the, a structure like this. You don't have to, as long as you know what these components what what components are. Does it make sense, guys? Okay, of course, out of these five types, wax is not in our animal systems.
these four are all in our nanosystems. And these five are, again, subonifiable lipids. Okay, why they're subonifiable? You can see that at least they have what? An ester or an amide bond. You have this picture in your book. Okay, this is from your book, and also we have the picture. It should be in your notes. All right, next. Okay, next. Before we move on to non-subonifiable lipids, we have to take a look at the function and one unique function of lipids. Okay, one unique function of lipids is lipids or a few types of these lipids we have studied so far are important components of membranes. Okay, you guys, you guys studied biology and AMP. You know, our cells or our organelles are surrounded by what? By membranes. And the membranes are constructed by some of the lipids we have studied so far. So we'll talk about briefly the function of these lipids. You can see that I listed here these four types of lipids, triglyceride, phospholipids, sphingophospholipids, and sphingoglycolipids, these four types. This type, fat and oil, are not involved in limb membrane. They're basically what? Energy products. Right? You, you store energy, we store body fat that's just for energy storage. Okay, those are called energy storage lipids, triglycerides, fat and oil. But the other three types we have studied, including again, phospholipids, sphingophospholipids, and sphingoglycolipids are called membrane lipids. Membrane lipids means what? These lipids are constructing cell membranes. Why they can construct in cell membranes and what is a cell membrane? We're gonna discuss it right now. Okay, first, very briefly, you guys have studied that properly in, in, in biology classes. Okay, this is a picture of a bacteria which belongs to what? Eukaryotic, a prokaryotic, or type of prokaryotic cells. The reason we, we classify them in as prokaryotic because Bacteria or cells like bacteria don't possess cell membranes. They don't have membrane systems. And their genetic substance, this is their DNA for bacteria, are exposed in the cytosols. They are not enclosed in a part of the cell called the cell nucleus. Okay, you can see that there's no membrane surrounding their genetic substance. And on the, on the outside of the cell, a bacteria, there's no cell membrane either. This is called the cell wall of bacteria. Okay, that's a very less advanced type of cell called the prokaryotic cells. Our cells, like a human cell, looks like this, are called eukaryotic cells. Okay, we're eukaryotes. And the difference main difference between our cells and the bacteria cell is what? Not only we have a cell membrane, but our main cellular organelles, okay, like the organs of each cell, the compartments, the functional compartments of each cell are also enclosed in what? In membranes. Especially our DNAs are in the membrane enclosed the system called what? The nucleus. So membrane is a more advanced compartment, form of more advanced compartments separating the cell from external environment and also separating what these functional compartments inside a single cell, making us what are more functional, more detailed functions and more advanced. So of course today we're not talking about the biology, but we're gonna talk about What's unique about these membrane lipids? What makes them to make a membrane system, to form a membrane system? Okay, let's take a look. One of the membrane lipid, phosphoglycerate. Okay, this is a structure, again, that block, kind of like a block diagram of the phosphoglycerate. Again, we're reviewing many times. Hope you guys always have an image of the block diagrams of any lipid we'll talk about. Okay, this is a phosphoglycerate, meaning the alcohol is what? Glycerol, and glycerol has three OHs, two of the OH linked with two fatty acids through two 
ester bonds. Is that right? On the third OH, there's a phosphate and what? And an alcohol. Okay, the alcohol can be choline, ethanolamine, or serine. Doesn't matter. This is a phosphoglycerate. Now, if you look at the structure, okay, look for look at the structure. This molecule has three or two main parts. One part is this small. This, even though it looks complicated, but it's a tiny phosphate and small alcohol. This part is regular, relatively small, but this part has what? Charges. You can see that the phosphate is negatively charged. The amine will be positively charged. So this part is called the polar head of this lipid. Okay, why head? Because it's relatively smaller. Okay, if you think about it, it's like a person. This is the tiny head, but the polar of the molecule. The other parts of this molecule is what? Two long chain of what? Fatty acids, right? We know fatty acids are what? Are nonpolar. So these are kind of two nonpolar tails of the molecule. So this is what the molecule really looks like. Even though we draw it like this, the block diagram shows like this, but this is what the molecule looks like. The head, this is the phosphate. You guys see that? That's the, the small alcohol. This part is polar. And with a polar head, you have two what? Non-polar tail. These two non-polar hairs are what? Are fatty acids. They are fatty acids. Does this make sense, guys? This is one of the structure of Membrane lipid, phospholipid. Let's take a look at sphingophospholipid. Okay, sphingophospholipid. This is the structure of a sphingocyte. And you see, sphingocyte has a chain already, right? We see that the molecule of sphingocyte has a chain of, of tail already, one tail. But once you make a sphingophospholipid, you will need to add another one. Fatty acid to it through amide bond. You guys remember this amide bond? And also sphingophospholipid has a what? Has a phosphate as well. So you can see that sphingophospholipid also has a what? Has a polar head and what? Two tone nonpolar tails. Of course, these two nonpolar tails are not both fatty acids. One of them is a fatty acid. Another one is what? Is the chain of the sphingosine itself. Does it make sense? See that? This is the structure of a sphingophospholipid. This is the structure of Phosphoglycerides. They look what? Very similar regarding the overall structure of, 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 of these lipids. Okay, now, if you look at these three types of membrane lipids, you will you would understand why they're called a membrane. Because these three types have the same structural constructor, constructions. Polar head. Polar head, the carbohydrate is also polar. And what? Two nonpolar tails. Is that right, guys? You see that? These three are membrane lipids. Now you know why they're all membrane lipids or why they can be used as membrane lipid by nature. Because structurally, they're similar in that purpose. The similar means what? All these three types, they have what? A polar head. What is polar? The phosphate and the carbohydrates are polar. What are the nonpolar tails? Either two fatty acids or one fatty acid and what? One chain from the sphingosine. Does it make sense, guys? So all these three types can be shown like this. The polar head and what? Two nonpolar tails. You guys see that? Good? Now think about it. These lipids are going to make a membrane. That means these lipids is, go, is going to be placed in what? In physiological condition. What is physiological condition? In a certain pH, in a certain temperature, but most importantly, under physiological condition, these lipids are in what environment? In what environment? Think about our body or any animal, animal bodies, what is the environment for biomolecules? What are biomolecules located in, in, in which, which type of environment? What media are these biomolecules located in? What media? It's very simple, don't overthink. 
seventy percent of our body weight is water. what? Water. Is water, right? This molecule is going to be in what? Water. In water. In all physiologic condition is in water medium. But think about it. these two parts. The head polar likes water, but the tail is what? Hates water. So nature designed a very beautiful way of solving these problems. When you put these lipids in water, they will self-assemble into this bilayer structure. Bilayer means what? You have two layers of water, uh, two layers of lipids. But these two layers, you can see that the tails are what? Pointing to each other facing inwards and the heads are what exposed outside so you may, if you imagine this is a membrane what happens is inside the membrane inside the cell and outside the cell are both what water is that right and but for both the water these tails hate it so how to solve the problem is by hiding these two tails what inside and what is really interacting with the water environment are these what? Are these polar heads, which beautifully solve the problem. The, the lipids are hitting inside. They're not interacting with, interacting with water. And we call this structure tail-to-tail -tail lipid bilayer. Okay, tail-to-tail -tail means what? Tails are hitting inside. Bilayer means what? You have two layers of lipids. Okay, tail-to-tail lipid bilayer looking like this that okay, this is the tails these are the the heads okay. this structure is self-assembled means the lipids will, will do this automatically okay you don't need like an external force they will form this bilayer structures itself now but this structure is not rigid the reason the structure can be held together is not because of water. Because these tails are all what? Hydrophobic. They're non-polar. So they don't like water, but they like each other. They're all kind of oil. These tails like each other, so they're all holding together by that force called a hydrophobic effect. Because remember, they're all what? Hydrophobic. If they're all hydrophobic, they like each other. And because of that effect, okay, the layer-to-layer -layer structure is not rigid. The, the lipid molecule can actually diffuse from here to there in a certain degree. It's not like a rigid form structure. The lipid can actually diffuse. This lipid molecule can move to here. That one can move kind of like that. Not in a great degree, but in a certain degree, the lipid molecule can diffuse. Okay, this is one structural fact about lipid bilayer. Another structural fact is, remember, we said the fatty acids, the fatty acids can either be saturated or what? Unsaturated. When you have an unsaturated fatty acid, what happens? The chain is going to be what? Kinked. Okay, this is what shows. Remember, the lipids, fatty acids are random. There are some fatty acids saturated, or there are some what? Unsaturated. If there's kinks, means what? There are some actually Space created inside the what? The lipid bilayer. You can like this. There are some gaps in there. And these gaps are used to store another type of lipids, mainly cholesterol. Okay, these are small, you can see cholesterol molecules. Okay, we're gonna see cholesterol uh, in a few minutes when we study non subonifal lipids. Okay, cholesterol molecules are not only to store them, they actually regulate the membrane rigidity, the structure, kind of like fix the structure, make sure the structure is more rigid. Okay, regulate the membrane structures. Okay, again, these tiny lipids are cholesterol molecules. Okay, how they, they can be stored? Because they what? The lipid chains are, are kinked. Does it make sense? Okay, this is again the basic structure of cell membranes. Okay, made by what? Made by lipids. Seventy percent of the cell membrane is lipid. Okay, you may wonder what that. Uh, the other thirty percent are. The other thirty percent are proteins. 
Okay, this is a picture showing you a cell piece of cell membrane. You can see that by layer with some cholesterol and also the, these big islands and icebergs are proteins. They can either be on the surface, on the inner surface, or even passing through the membrane as channels of commuting with, with outside the cells. And you can see on the membrane, okay, on the outside the membrane, on the proteins, there are what? These trees are called what? Remember I told you in chapter seven, what are these trees, branches are? What do you think they are? Carbohydrates. This is how our cells are constructed by the molecules we learn in this class. Okay, again, of course, mainly lipids. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, uh, one last thing I wanna show you here before we move on to non-spotting fiber because this is a picture of a flu virus. Okay, flu virus, take a look at the outside, the, 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 the outside, the, we call the envelope. Flu virus is kind of like an a, a envelope virus. Okay, take a look at the outside the virus, the envelope of it, what do you see? Do you see the lipid bilayer? Yeah. Okay, where are they coming from? Where do you think they're coming from? You guys haven't learned microbiology, right? Mm -hmm. what, what are viruses? Viruses are basically what? Parasites, right? They cannot live by themselves. They have to what? Have a host. What their host for flu virus? Human cells. So when these viruses coming out of our cells, they actually took a part of the membrane, wrapped them up. So these membranes are basically from what? From, from human cells. Okay, that's how they infect human cells. They first get infect and, and replicate a lot of copies. And when they bat out, they took a part of the membrane wrapping themselves up. Of course, your cell eventually dies. Okay, this is how the virus cycle. And flu virus is a, is a type of envelope virus, and their envelope is basically a piece of cell membrane wrapped up, used by, by them. Okay, used by them. I just want to show you uh, the membrane, lipid bilayer membrane. Still, you can see that it's bilayer. Of course, the proteins are, are, are now their proteins. They express their own proteins. Their DNA infused with our DNA. Okay? So that's uh, part of the, uh, the, this chapter we talk about the functions of lipids. One of the most important function is cell membranes. Okay, that's why we spend like 10 minutes, 15, to talk about the membrane structures. Okay, so very briefly, in the second part of this chapter, we're gonna talk about a few types of non-sabonifiable lipids. Okay, a few types meaning two big types, but we have a few subtypes and a few uh, to, 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 to mention. Very quickly, I will uh, go over this, this part. The mainly is for your reading, but you will see these questions in your, in your testing quizzes just, just like regular, but these are relatively easy, so we don't want to spend too much time on them. Okay? There are many two big types of non sabonifiable lipids. One type is steroids, and another type is called axonoids. You're going to see that. And prostaglandin is one of the axonoids. Okay, so let's take a look at the first type uh, steroids. Okay, steroids are a group of organic molecules. Okay, group of organic molecules. Steroids are is a big group. Okay, I know you, you guys. When you hear steroids, you always first maybe as you heard of is the hormones, right? Steroid hormones. This is just one type. Okay, steroids is a big type of organic molecules. But all of them have one thing in common. That is this core structure. This is called the steroid core or steroid. Nucleus, okay, this is the basic structure, the core of a steroid. It has three, six membrane, you can see six membrane and a five membrane fused together like this in this format. Okay, you don't have to know the numbering, you only need to recognize the structure, okay? And you don't even need to know where the functional groups are located at. These are just some info for you. Okay, normally, okay, normally there's a functional group on number three, oxygen, and there is a chain on number 17. Okay, you will see that real examples, but again, don't worry about the numbering. You won't be asked about the number. But again, you need to recognize at least molecule with this nucleus are called what? Steroids, and you will see some more examples, okay? The most important, the most abundant steroid in the human body is this stuff, cholesterol, okay, cholesterol. As I, as I said earlier, steroids normally have a oxygen, number three carbon, do you guys see that? 
There's OH on number three. That's why we call cholesterol. Why cholesterol? Because it's an alcohol. See that? A secondary alcohol for cholesterol. Of course, there is a hydrocarbon chain on number 17 for cholesterol. Very simple. There's nothing else. Only a double bond and an OH. Not much function group for cholesterol. But this molecule, okay, this molecule is the most abundant steroid in our human body. The reason it's most abundant, later on you're going to see that all other steroids are synthesized from cholesterol. Okay, that's the starting part, point for any other steroids, steroids in our human body. Okay, and of course, they're synthesized by, we can synthesize steroids by, by our liver, and also they're present in all kinds of foods. Okay, and uh, I know you guys have heard of a lot of bad imagery about steroids, okay, but generally speaking, there are two types of steroids. I'm sorry, cholesterols uh, in our in our in our physiological systems. One is called bad cholesterol, and another one is good good cholesterol. Okay, cholesterols are not transported by itself because cholesterol is a lipid; it doesn't dissolve in, in water, so you cannot transport cholesterol in blood by itself. Cholesterols are transported by combining with proteins. Okay, proteins. And the resulting products of protein with cholesterol, pro cholesterol are hiding, because they're small, they're hiding in a big ball, and they're hiding inside of the ball, called, called the lipoprotein. Okay, there are two types of lipoproteins for cholesterol. One type is called LDL, called low-density lipoproteins. Okay, LD stands for low-density. And that's the bad cholesterol, because they're actually coming out of your, 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 your metabolism system. Okay, they're, they're excess of them and coming out. And another type of cholesterol is called good cholesterol, and they're transported in HDL, called high-density lipoproteins, okay, high-density. And these lipoproteins are actually transported back to the liver to be metabolized. That's why they're good, right? You're getting rid of cholesterol. Okay, the reason you guys have a have a bad image or heard of bad image, sometimes you eat some food, you wouldn't even ask yourself, hey, does this food is too much, has too much cholesterol in it? The reason is their research shows there's a strong correlation between high blood cholesterol level and a disease called atherosclerosis. Basically, the, the hardening of your, of your artery, heart artery. Uh, that would cause heart attack, of course. Okay, there's a correlation study shows between the disease and the, the blood cholesterol level. Okay, but again, cholesterol are two types. Okay, some cholesterols like high density lipoproteins are good. That means when you have a blood work lipid check, the more, the higher level of HDL, the better, because shows you have a greater ability to what? To take the cholesterol back to the liver to be utilized, to be synthesized. Okay, some, something you can read. Okay, next the type of steroid is something help us to digest food called bio acids okay bio acids okay you can see that very similar this is the structure of cholesterol these are some bio acids okay there are bio acids the difference the biggest difference between cholesterol and bio acids is on the chain of the 17 you can see that on the bio acid structure there is a what polar acid group Right? So that means these bio acids, kind of like soap, it has a polar head and what? And a non-polar body. Okay, what does soap do? Break down what? Grease, break, break down oil. That's the same thing for bio acids. They help us to break down our fat and oil from diet into what? Into tiny, tiny droplets so that our bloodstream can easily what? Absorb them. Okay, our intestine can easier, easily absorb these lipid small droplets. If they're too big chunk, you cannot digest them well. Okay, that's the function of the bio acids. Okay, of course, some bio acids even have some more polar functional groups attached to the, the polar acid to, again, further what? Stronger strength, make, strengthen the, 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 the emusing, emusifying power of the, the soap. Okay, bio acid is basically like a soap inside us. Okay, there's a word called emulsifying. What's emulsifying? Basically, how, how the power of breaking down what? Grease and, and 
Today, we're going to test out the musing power of our own soap. Okay, we're going to put some oil into a test tube and see our soap. Can our soap can break down oil as well? The same function. Okay, of course, we don't eat soap. Our gallbladder can, can, can secrete bile acids. Okay, reason again, bile acids can help, down, help break down lipids is because of what? It has a polar head, kind of like a polar part. Okay, kind of like a dual functional as well. The same function as soap does. Okay, a third type of steroids are the ones you probably heard the most called steroid hormones. Okay, steroid hormones. First, what is a hormone? Hormone is a small organic molecule serving as a messenger. Okay, serving as a messenger that produce, that is produced by one gland and the one to give the order what? To another gland or organ. Okay, because we're a multi, multicellular organisms. We, we, some organisms are distant apart. So how do they communicate? Hormones is one of the messenger molecules. Okay, this table listed a few types of hormones. We have small hormones like we studied in chapter six. Epinephrine, norepinephrine, these are small hormones, small molecule of hormones. We have peptide hormones. We have protein hormones. We're going to study that in chapter 11. And of course, steroid hormones are a big type. A big type. Now, with regarding steroid hormones, we have two subtypes. Like I said, you need to know these basic facts. You don't have to draw any structures. Okay, we have two subtypes of steroid hormones. One big subtype is sex hormones, okay, sex hormones including androgens, estrogens, and progesterones. Okay, female hormones, male hormones, and pregnancy hormones. Okay, and the representative hormones are listed afterwards. Okay, for example, testosterone is one of the androgens. Okay, progesterone is one of the progesterogens. Okay, these are uh, three types of sex hormones. And now I want to show you the structures of them and to show you how amazing the nature designed these molecules and how close the structures are, but they have totally different functions. Take a look. This is a estrogen, the primary estrogen called estradiol. Okay, this is the androgen, one of the male sex, hor male sex hormone called testosterone. Okay, this is the pregnancy hormones. Take a look at their structures. Again, you don't have to memorize the structure. How close these structures are tiny chain of the structure will, will have a totally different functions. Okay, but you can see that they all have what? The same core structure. And they all synthesized it from where? From cholesterol. They're all present in both male and females, by the way. Okay, it's not like exclusive, it's just different amount. Okay, and the bottom three structure are based on the structure of sex hormones are synthesized drugs. Okay, some for uh, tissue building, uh, some are uh, abortion drugs. Okay, they're synthesized based on the structure of sex hormones. Okay, another type of steroid hormones called adrenal corticoid hormones. Okay, from the name you know the adrenal corticoids are what? Produced by our adrenal glands. Okay, adrenal glands. There are many two types of adrenal corticoids. One type is called mineral corticoids. Another type is glucocorticoids. Okay, from the name of each, you can actually guess their functions. Mineral corticoids meaning what? Regulate the, 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 the metabolism of minerals. Okay, of minerals, meaning the potassium, sodium, the minerals. Okay. Glucocorticoids regulates the metabolism of carbohydrates, glucose. Okay, cortisol, this structure is one of the main glucocorticoids in our system. Now, besides regulating carbohydrate metabolism, glucocorticoids has another function that is used currently as medicine. That function is anti 
inflammation, the anti-inflammation. The one shown in here are two synthetic glucocorticoids, just very simple step. You guys can even see that what, what's, what's done in the structure. Okay, for example, from here, cortisol to cortisol, what's done? Do you guys see that? The reaction you guys can learn before. What's the difference between cortisol? Again, this is our natural glucocorticoid. This is one of the synthesized one called cortisol. Okay, what happened is the alcohol here is oxidizing into what? Into a ketone. Do you see that? Secondary alcohol is oxidizing into what? Into a ketone. That's why cortisol becomes what? Cortisol. You guys probably have used them a lot. I used it. Okay, you can buy cortisol. From, uh, this is cortisol. Okay, anti-aging, aging, just basically anti-inflammatory, uh, tropical creams. And this one is hydro uh, cortisol. Where sometimes you can see that you actually introduced what a double bond on this piece of carbon. Okay, so these are the main type of steroids, and of course you don't have to know anything about this state, but I wanna show you. This is the map of steroids, hormones. You can see that one can be turned into another by a simple biological step, okay? But they're all starting from what? From cholesterol. And they're interconverting with each other a lot of times, okay, a lot of times. That's why these hormones are not exclusive. Okay, they're, they're, they're present in both male and females because they are interacting converting with, with them very easily. Okay, their structures are very much related. Okay, very much related. Right, these are uh, steroid hormones. And the last part of this chapter, okay, very shortly we're gonna talk about exonoids. Okay, what are exonoids? Are a group of lipids, okay, group of lipids derived from and very important fatty acid called arachidonic acid. Okay, this acid is very unique. It has 20 carbons and four double bonds. Okay, 20 carbons, four double bonds. Okay, this is the starting material for all axonoids. Okay, for all axonoids. And because of this, okay, because of this, many axonoids will also have 20 carbons and a structure looking like this fatty acid. Okay, these are three main types of exonoids, including prostaglandins, thruboxane, and leukotriene. Okay, these are three main types of exonoids. They're all derived from the arachidonic acid. Okay, one of the types is shown here, prostaglandins, they're, they're, they're isolated, first isolated in prostate gland. That's why they're named prostaglandins. Okay, they're named this one, but because they're first isolated from prostate gland. And you can see their structures. Okay, these are structures. This is the starting material. These are the materials of prostaglandins. Again, this part, uh, the most important thing for these lipids is to be able to recognize their structures. And note briefly, what the classifications are and also their functions. Okay, you don't have to draw any structures in detail or not even block structures, just recognize them. Know what type of they are and if asked some very simple biological functions. If you read the notes, that's more than sufficient. Okay, you don't even need to read any supplementary reading materials or any more practice. If you read this part of the notes, that's more than enough for the purpose of, 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 of the class and the test and the quizzes. All right, that's all for chapter, uh, chapter eight. And the last part is, I'm showing the classification of lipids by functions. Now that we have studied all the lipids, you know what they're each one they're used for. And this is how your book is classified. Okay, they're not classified by the structure, but by the function. That's why sometimes it can be confusing. That's why I don't want to adopt the classification of your own book. But now you know that what these lipids are actually used for because you have studied all of them. And um, this is, again, how your book classifies the lipids. Okay, they're classifying them by functions.
right? That's all for chapter eight.